the discussion we are going to happen because this is a topic that we have not covered actually in all the episodes we have done before. Like what is the role of liver, gallbladder and its relation to Hashimoto's and thyroid. So before we delve into this discussion, let me introduce our speaker for today. So that way uh, you know about her and her credentials and things. And then we'll go with the, her story actually because she herself battled with Hashimoto's disease. So Divya is a dedicated functional nutrition coach and educator, is on a mission to guide ambitious corporate crusaders towards a brighter future than their parents through a personalized path to reclaim their health and live life on their terms. Drawing from her 15 plus years of experience in the corporate world, Divya understands the challenges of conventional well-being approaches. Her health journey began with the removal of a gallbladder at age 20 and a Hashimoto's diagnosis at age 25. Faced with a conventional pill for every ill approach, she witnessed her mother's health decline with similar diseases, compelling her to take control of her health to avoid a compromised quality of life. Fueled by her passion for health and wellness, coupled with a desire to make a positive impact, Divya has become a wellness advocate. Divya's life is a testament to the transformation she brings to others, unlocking the full potential of their well-being. Divya, welcome to the show over here. Thank you so much, Anshul, and thank you for the opportunity. I'm so excited for our conversation. Absolutely. And battling with Hashimoto's at a young age of 25, I'm sure a lot of people who are listening over here want to know how you overcame that. Oh, uh, you know... Um... All of us, a lot of us in this space, you know, come with our, we start here because of our own health challenges. I know Dr. Anshul, you've had, you battle Hashimoto's and your whole, whole, own health challenges as well. So a little background, you know, I'm an Indian immigrant and I came to the U.S. Now, almost 20 years ago. And my health, and I came with a very stereotypical path. I did my computer science engineering in India and came here for my master's. And my health challenges started, you know, as I said in my, in my introduction, as you said in introduction at the age of 20, and I don't remember a lot of things about when I was 20, a lot of things that happened, but I remember clearly when my gallbladder pain attack started. It would happen at night, every night around 2, 3 a.m., I would wake up in pain. And initially I would wake up in pain and I'm like, I'm just pacing the room because nothing else seemed to work apart from pacing the room. And, you know, you just chalk it up to maybe I ate something that didn't sit right with me that day or it's just gas and, you know, it will be okay. And it, but it kept happening every night and the pain just intensified. I did not even tell my parents at that point that I was waking up because I'm like, why, why worry them? But finally, after it happening quite a few times, I finally told my parents and they said, wake us up next time. And long story short, the pain just kept happening. The intensity kept increasing until one day I landed in the hospital to figure out what the hell is going on. And you know, there was a radiologist present and he finally did an ultrasound where we're like, oh, you have gallstones. In one sense, there was a relief that at least I know what it is. But honestly, I had no idea what the gallbladder is, was and what it did and what function. Why is it happening? Right. And we go to the endocrinologist and the solution that was given, oh, we don't need, you know, we can just take it out and you'll, your pain will go away. And that sounded pretty great at that point because I was in a lot of pain, like every night being up and I was doing my engineering. I was preparing for my exams and, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to schedule my surgery after the exam. So everything goes well, but life had other plans where one night, it, this all happened in a period of a couple of few months until I can't tell you, I've been through childbirth, 48 hour childbirth. I would still say that pain was worse than that. I just woke up one night in pain. I'm in tears. I could feel my stomach like, you know, twisting. It was probably muscle spasm. I was throwing up and had to be rushed to the hospital. And my, you know, a surgery was scheduled, had to be taken out. And yes, I don't wish that upon some, anyone else. But, you know, when a gallbladder is an organ, our body is so be beautifully designed by whatever faith you believe. And it has a function. And just taking it out is just like at the tip of the iceberg. If there is dysregulation with your gallbladder, there's probably something else happening underneath. But that root cause question was not was asked, hey, why did the gallbladder attack start in the first place? But my gallbladder was taken out and 
lo and behold, things got better. You know, you get back to your studies. I came to the U.S., but my health challenges continued where, you know, now when I look back, I was dealing with some sort of IBS, stress-related new country. I was in an Ivy League school making new friends. I, I was dealing with a lot of those post-traumatic, I would feel the same aches and pains in my stomach. I was I started working for a top four consulting firm on the road all the time. And I was tired, you know, very classic signs of hypothyroidism. Tired, no matter how much I sleep, I was tired. And my muscles would ache all the time. I would go to the doctor and they said, it's in your head. You're fine, go away. And it, being young, it's very, being so dismissed. And you trust the doctors. And, you know, at that point, I didn't know how to advocate for myself. I was so young and I believed it. And I was so confused, like, I'm not feeling well. Something is off. And until by the time I was 25, my OBGYN was the one. I think you need to see an endocrinologist. I finally got diagnosed with Hashimoto's. And now you and I know there is a link, and we'll get into the topic today, that there is a link between our gallbladder and thyroid. But when I was 20, if someone had asked a question and looked deeper, maybe my thyroid could have been reversed or managed better. Who knows? But, you know, we all go through our experience and it got me where I am today because it, you know, I, it really changed my life. And, you know, as I said in my bio, I was seeing my mom go through the same challenges. She had a gallstone, gallbladder removed, even though she wasn't having any pain, followed by Hashimoto's. And then by the time I, was, I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's, she got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And I saw her life quality degrade. You know, all the steroids she had to take uh, to manage the pain. And that's when I connected the dots that if I don't change anything, I could see my future. I'm following the same path just 20 years earlier than her. So that's when I'm like, okay, what can I change? What can I control? I wish we had your podcast 15 years ago. So I could, you know, go into a lot of the great, you know, supplements, lifestyle, you know, tips that you provide your audience. But a lot of this information wasn't there. So, but I had to really dive into the literature, change my diet, change my lifestyle. And God, it made a huge difference. I could feel the difference. And that's when my love affair with holistic nutrition and lifestyle started. Went back to school to get my nutrition degree. Um, I'm a restorative wellness practitioner as well. And I quit my Silicon Valley job to do this full time because I really found my true calling in helping people impact people and nobody has to go through what I did if it can be avoided. Absolutely. That's an inspiring story. A lot of people who are listening over here, they want to kind of have the Cinderella story of yours where went through a lot of trouble and did the right things and was able to get your life back. So awesome. So, I mean, obviously the bigger question is that what is the connection between the liver, the gallbladder and the thyroid? Because these organs are placed very like you know distantly in our body and people cannot put right. them two and two together well how is my gallbladder and liver linked to my thyroid so show us some light over there absolutely you know uh our body is so beautiful and you know as you said our these organs are a different position in our body but they are interlinked nothing in our body works in isolation and everything in our body is our bodies our organs are so multifaceted they also don't provide you know perform just one function either so like, you know, let's take a little step back. So we, for our thyroid to work function properly, we need five organs to work synergistically with each other. Our brain, our thyroid, because the brain sends a signal to our thyroid, our liver and, and the gut. We'll get into the details, but that's where a lot of the conversion of your inactive thyroid hormone T4 to T3 happens and also your adrenals. So now how is it linked? You know, great. You know, that was my quest when I got into it. What's going on here? So our liver, which is one of the hardest working organ in our body, does so much. It produces bile, it produces cholesterol, it filters our blood, our vitamin D is processed, and it detoxes as well. It does a, a whole lot more that I'm probably missing, but it does a ton for us. And our gallbladder, which just sits right underside of the liver, and it's a small pear-shaped organ, is used to store the bile that the liver produces. And our bile is used to break down our fatty foods. It helps us digest fatty meals. So, and the liver acids producing 
it stores it in the gallbladder so that it is in the right proportion and right concentration that we have the bile present when whenever we eat a fatty meal. And bile is also made up of cholesterol, bile salts, and a few other raw materials that a liver uses as well. So now the way a liver, gallbladder, and a thyroid are connected, and again, there's such a synergistic relationship, you could have a thyroid issue and it could affect your liver and gallbladder or vice versa, your liver and gallbladder may not be functioning and could have a thyroid issue as well. Because our body has what trillions of cells and each of these cells have a receptor for a thyroid hormone. And I, I know Dr. Anshul, you have covered this in extensively with the other podcasts. Uh, thyroid controls a ton of different, different functions. It has a role to play in every function in a body from, from digestion to energy, from metabolism, to fertility, to your body temperature, you name it, right? So, so it plays a role. So our gallbladder and a liver also have receptors for this thyroid hormone. Now, if you have low thyroid, or if a thyroid is, you know, and it could be subclinical, it doesn't have to be that you have to be outside of the ranges. You could be on the lower and higher end. If you do not have enough the thyroid hormone, it affects your cholesterol production. It will affect your bile production you can get elevated LDL and so much more. And now how does that impact, right? So if I don't have enough the bile, which is made of bile salts and cholesterol, if that's impacted now, what the, the bile that is stored in the gallbladder is gets a little thick, sludgy. It's most more mainly cholesterol. And the gallbladder also has a receptor for the thyroid hormone, the sphincter of Adi, which, you know, when you eat a fatty meal, it knows it needs to contract, contract to release the bile into your small intestine. So when it doesn't have the thyroid hormone, it, it doesn't have the energy to contract effectively. So A, it's not releasing the bile out into your duct to digest your fatty meal. And so what happens? The bile is going to back up. It's going to get sludgy. And then it could potentially form gallstones. And you know, all 90% of the gallstones are cholesterol-based gallstones as well. So the other is now if you don't now the bile, you know, the cholesterol production, you're, you know, you're not producing, you know, cholesterol is not getting metabolized effectively in the liver. So again, all of these differences. So now we can see how by having low thyroid hormone can really impact your liver and your gallbladder. And if you the bile is not being released, you're not digesting your fatty food, then it can have a lot of downstream impact. Absolutely. I think you like you pointed out very interesting point over here. A lot of people, when they are told that they have cholesterol stones or any kind of stones in the gallbladder, the first thought is that, okay, well, I think it's because of my diet that I'm eating too much cholesterol and that's mm -hmm. the reason it is causing it. Well, what you're explaining is that, you know, it's because of your thyroid issues and the mm -hmm. collection of cholesterol or basically like, you know, thickening of the, the bile in the gallbladder, which is causing it. So yeah. it's very important to put these two and two together. So that's that's a very nice point that I think a lot of people would not be aware of. So thank you for sharing that. And Absolutely. I think the bile also does a very, very important job for detoxification for our gut. You know, like we always think it's basically the liver, right, which mm -hmm. is, has been associated with detoxification. But a gallbladder and the bile also plays an important role in detoxification, right? So that is maybe another reason that it is important for the thyroid health. Absolutely. You know, as you know, nothing in our body works has just one function. So bile, as you know, I mentioned, it helps with digesting fatty foods. It needs to break it down. The two is, as you just rightly pointed out, Dr. Anshul, it also helps with detoxification. It can conjugate to estrogen and the hormones that, that we don't need. It helps to get rid of it. And guess what, what hormones are made of? Fat. <laughs> so exactly. bile plays a role there. And number three is bile helps us utilize our fat soluble vitamins that are vitamin A, D, E, and K. And I'm sure you see a number of people in your practice, Dr. Anshul, that who are low in vitamin D and a lot of these fat soluble vitamins, and you can keep taking supplements and it's not, you know, the levels are not coming up. The question to ask is, you know, if you're, if you don't have the right concentration of bile, you know, just think of it as the potion, right, that we make, it has, it just not just having bile, the right cholesterol amount, the right bile salts for it to break down, it'll be hard for us to absorb 
these fat soluble vitamins, and then it's going to play a downstream impact. And the bile also is a potent antimicrobial, right? We get exposed to so much bacteria, pathogens outside, the bile also helps us protect us from that. And now if you don't have enough bile flowing, now you can see how you can lead to gut dysbiosis eventually. And it also signals our HCL production, which is hydrochloric acid that's in our stomach production. It has a role signaling in that direction too. So yeah, the bile plays a multifaceted role. And, and with someone like me, right now, I don't have a gallbladder. And, and in the US, I was looking up at some stats, in a year, almost 600,000 gallbladder removal surgeries are performed. Wow. And in the US, there are around 2 million people with gallstones. And mm. I don't know how many of what percentage of it, you know, could be saved if we just, okay, you know, really focus on gallbladder, liver health and thyroid health as well. So for someone like me who doesn't have a gallbladder, yes, the bile is being produced. Yes, I can live without a gallbladder, but it's just continuously trickling down this uh, small intestine. There's no place for it to collect, to get concentrated, for it to break down my fatty food. So I really have to, have to work on that for my health to get better. Absolutely. And I think that's a big issue with a lot of people who do not have their gallbladder, like, you know, how to manage, you know, like their diet and especially the fatty food sometimes will give them stomach upset and diarrhea. So, but before we move on to like what to do about it, I would like to kind of, you know, talk a little bit more about the gallbladder dysfunction, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people have been told, well, your gallbladder is not working, right? Either yeah. they have the gallstones or they're just told that, you know, your gallbladder doesn't squeeze enough of the bile out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, um, what are the particular, like, are there any particular tests that you find it useful for people that can know whether their yeah. gallbladder is functioning good or, you know, like literally like, you know, there is no way for them to know mm -hmm. how to assess the gallbladder function? Yeah, great question. You know, that's some, somebody listening to this episode can be like, you know, how do I know? So let's talk about some of the symptoms, right? Something without even the test that you can start noticing is if you have bloating, especially after eating a fatty meal, that's a sign. So, you know, bloating sometimes can be caused or oh, have you could have SIBO or, you know, not, not digesting well. Yes, that could happen too. But especially after a fatty meal, if you're bloating, that's a sign. Number two is to, there could be stomach distension, excessive burping as well. Three is if you start seeing clay colored stool, because bile really provides the color of your stool is really influenced by the bile. And if you see lighter colored stool, that could also signal to you that there is gallbladder dysfunction and bile, bile production dysfunction going on. And again, if you're low in your those fat soluble vitamins, vitamin, you know, your A, D, and K, because we need those vitamins, right? D is for your immune health, A is for your eye health. You know, how many people say, oh, I'm getting old, I need to go get glasses. You know, why? And K is for your blood clotting. And vitamin E is such a powerful antioxidant that you need in your body. So if you find yourself low in these fat soluble vitamins could be a sign. And, you know, one, your body, you know, well, gallbladder attacks, like, you know, mine was yelling at me when I was in pain. It, some people, you could just, you know, just on your right side is where your liver is under your ribs. So if you find pain there, so really do, do start looking at your gallbladder. And for some of the tests, you know, really looking at your liver function would be great in your AST, your ALT that you get in your annual physical as well. Getting your GGT could also be other uh, other tests to really dive in to see if how are you performing. Not your standard ranges, but if you're within the optimal ranges. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, very important point about we always talk about in the thyroid world about the optimal ranges, right? Because, you know, like the standard tests, you know, sometimes, you know, like might miss. Like initially you pointed out whether you have subclinical thyroid disorders, then also you're affecting your thyroid or your gallbladder functioning. Similar with the, the liver functioning, you know, like depending on where your enzyme levels are, that might also signify gallbladder. But the next question is that let's say like, you know, people have been told that they have gallstones. Mm -hmm. The standard care procedure is that, okay, remove your gallbladder because sooner or later those gallstones are going to block the gallbladder mm -hmm. and then that is going to cause like, you know, acute infection and that's the reason. So in your uh, experience, you know, like what have you seen, you know, once you get a gallstones, is there a way out of it or the only way out of it is removing the gallbladder? Uh, I hope not. Like, you know, there, my first preference would be really definitely working with your doctor to how can you 
keep the organ. You know, it plays a role. And I'm sure, you know, Western medicine has its place and can save lives. So there probably are scenarios there where you need to take it off. As you said, there could be an infection or something worse. So definitely work with your uh, medical, your doctor as well. But in my experience, if you have, have gallstones, number one, get your thyroid checked. If you have gallstones, you know, it is, as we said, you know, there is a connection to go get your thy uh, thyroid checked because if even if it's subclinical, and I know you did a great episode earlier with Dr. Sam Shea talking about the different lab tests, not just the TSH. Dr. Anshul, I know the number of times my clients come to me and they with the blood work and it's just TSH. And I know it looks good. I'm like, uh, where is your free T3, free T4, your reverse T3, but still uh, the, they wouldn't run because that really will give you an indication because TSH is just one part of the story. In the, in the liver, the, the T4, which is the inactive form, needs to be converted into T3, which is the active form. And our body is beautiful. It wants to be in balance. It's our friend. It's not our enemy. So it works really hard to work, you know, to balance it for a long time. Because by the time it shows up in the blood report, it's already been dysfunctional for a very long time. So yes, if you have I've had gallstone, gallbladder, if you have gallstones, definitely start getting your thyroid check and really getting, if you can manage your thyroid, improve your T4 and T3, that can really help to dissolve the stones and have balance it. And the other is also to start working on your gut health as well, because that also plays a role as well. So, you know, it's it's not a one approach. You have to look at it holistically of what's happening with your thyroid, what's happening with your gut health, and probably giving fatty food, not eating a fatty meal for some time, giving it a rest because your gallstones, your liver is already burdened and it's not able to digest. Let's giving it a break for some time while you work on your gallbladder could really help if you can potentially reverse it or save it or dissolve it and Absolutely. avoid the surgery route. What are your thoughts, yeah. Dr. Anshul? Yeah, no, I think that's great. Definitely, like, you know, there are options of dissolving the gallstones. You know, it will be nice to know what kind of gallstones they are, but absolutely correct that improving the gut health, overall microbiome of the gut, as well as, you know, like using sometimes bile salts could be mm -hmm. a, a potential way of uh, uh, dissolving these stones and see where you are. Absolutely. Um, let's switch over a little bit to the liver health. You know, like we have talked about the gallbladder. Liver is one of those things that a lot of people, you know, like know about that it plays a very mm -hmm. important role in detoxification. A lot of people with Hashimoto's or with hypothyroidism have been diagnosed with a fatty liver disorder. Mm -hmm. And they have been like, you know, looking for reasons or ways of improving it. So like, you know, what are your thoughts or like connections between the fatty liver and thyroid? What potentially mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, things could be deranged because of fatty liver? Yes, yeah, so, you know, this is what in the last few decades is when we have started seeing the non a rise in the non-alcoholic fatty liver as well. And then a lot of it is based on the sad standard American diet, which has increased in refined carbohydrates, our sugars have gone up. And that has led to, you know, excess glucose being stored as fat in a liver. You know, you know, I mentioned earlier, liver does a ton for us. So liver is also the place where if you have blood sugar dysregulation, if your body is, your cells are not able to absorb the glucose effectively, it is going to go get stored in the liver. And secondly, with the thyroid, so when you don't have enough of the thyroid hormone, your cholesterol production can also go up. It, it's not metabolized. It can, you are producing excess cholesterol and it's not really getting used. So that's why a lot of people with thyroid also see high cholesterol numbers as well. That could be, you know, hey, I'm not eating high cholesterol food. They start changing the diet, but why is my LDL going up as well? So that could be a sign as well. And we also have to like, you know, the liver is where a lot of the conversion takes place. So really taking care of your liver health from a detoxification is key. So how do you support it? You know, in diet number one. We'll talk you know, about that. But, you know, like you mentioned a very important point, you know, which I want to talk to people about is in terms of the conversion of the T4 to T3. A lot of people think it is happening like, you know, in each and every organ, but it happens mainly in the liver. And a lot mm -hmm. of people who livers is not functioning that's where we see that the conversion is not happening. And a lot of people, as you know, are being, you know, given this medicine called levothyroxine, which is only T4. And they mm -hmm. still have a lot of symptoms, 
and they're not feeling good. And majority of it, there could be the reason that the liver is not functioning fine and the conversion is not happening. And that's yeah. where I think, you know, supporting the liver health could be a game changer for them and maybe improve their symptom as well as the teeth through numbers. You're absolutely right. You know, they, because the Synthroid, the popular medicine that's given, it is just T4, which is the inactive form that your cells can do nothing with. It has to be converted to the active form T3. And it happens in the liver, right, Libby, as you pointed out, and also in, in your gut. Also, the enzymes and right enzymes need to be produced and you have to have the right microbiome so it can do the conversion so we can use the, we can use the cells, can use the T3. So a lot of the doctors, and that's what I was prescribed too, here's Synthroid. And, you know, for a lot, for a lot of people, I know exactly for that reason doesn't work when the conversion is not happening. For me, it worked, but I stay on top of my numbers and I had to be an advocate for myself to also get a T3 because I wanted to ensure I'm, you know, it's in the optimal range. And for people listening, if you are on Synthroid and if you still have low energy, end of the day, you know, if you're adrenal, if you, you know, end of afternoon, you need a pick me up, really, really ask your doctor for a T3 number and really advocate for yourself. So that's number definitely how your liver health and having a fatty liver can impact your thyroid. Just your TSH numbers may look good. And the doctor said, you don't have a thyroid issue. So that's why getting the whole panel is important because your brain to the liver is working, brain to the thyroid is working well, and it's sending the right signal. It's producing T4, but it's the conversion that's not happening. And that could be Absolutely. easily reverse if you get, if you catch it earlier on. It's you know definitely manageable and reversible. Great. So now we know what the problem is. Gall, bladder, and liver definitely plays a very very important role in Hashimoto's and thyroid. Now, obviously, people would like to know how to fix it. So we definitely would like to know, like you know, what people can do to improve their liver and gallbladder health. So if you want to mm -hmm. take both together, that's great. If you want to kind of you know, do something for liver and gallbladder separately. So go ahead with that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know, everything is connected. So I'll do it together because you can't take one out of the other. So I really want to, you know, give very practical guidance to everyone listening on, you know, across nutrition, lifestyle and supplements that can be really helpful here. So when we get into the nutrition standpoint, you know, having a whole plant-based you know, with good protein, a right amount of animal protein and healthy fats is critical. And, you know, go back and listen to some of the previous episodes that we, you know, some of your other experts get into the detail. That's super critical for health. But for liver health, you know, really focusing on the bitter foods will be key. You know, bitter, bitter liver loves bitter foods. Like, so that's your arugula, your endives, your bitter melon or karela from where we come from. Yeah, it's called um, artichokes grapefruit you know nature has made these foods naturally for help to help us you know help for liver function some of the herbs that are really beneficial are like dandelion root milk thistle tea those can be incorporated as well that can be very supportive for your liver artichokes are great you know one of the most liver uh, loving food is like beetroot i love beetroots so having beetroots lemon turmeric you know, adding these spices into your food, into your diet will really be supportive of your liver. And one of the habits that I adopted now, it's been like more than five years, is wake up. When you wake up in the morning, do a hot water and lemon. You know, start your day. It's a very ancient Ayurvedic practice and people are catching on to it in the Western world. But it does a lot. It supports detoxification, supports your liver and does a lot. So that is one tip. I think that really helped me change change my uh, my health game a ton. Um, so that's from more on the nutrition front. When it comes to supplements, and if there, you know, I'm gonna, you know, and if you do have a gallbladder, and if you're dealing with stones or gallbladder attacks, adding, you know, ox bile, bile salts, and even hydrochloric acid could be a game changer because you need support in digesting the food because you're right now, your gallbladder is not being able to function, not being able to release the bile. It's, you know, because it does not enough thyroid hormone to contract and get the bile out. So adding bile salts, ox bile, hydrochloric acid can really help with digestion. Even digestive enzymes, uh, apple cider vinegar before a meal could also be super helpful with, um, 
if you have gall, if you don't, if you still have your gallbladder intact, and if you don't have your gallbladder, someone like me, definitely add these uh, into your diet because you really need help. Because right now, when I don't have a gallbladder, there's a slow, continuous trickle into my small intestine. So when I do eat a fatty meal, you may or may not have the right amount of bile present. So you need to have supportive these supplements from that I just mentioned above, and also ox bile. Um, in sorry some of the herbal, the dandelion and milk thistle tea could be great. From the lifestyle perspective, you know, you know, as you are giving, you're dealing with a gallbladder, you know, if you have stones or condition or even a liver, reducing or eliminating alcohol for a little bit could be helpful because just to give your liver a rest, your gallbladder some rest, and perhaps even giving fatty meals a break for a little bit. So you can, while you can reset, reset and rejuvenate because our liver cells rejuvenate every six weeks, if I'm right, if I remember that. So just giving it that time so it can rejuvenate before you start eating a fatty meal as well. So alcohol and, you know, removing processed food, you know, that goes without saying removing processed food from your diet because they're empty calories. They have a ton of toxins and additives that, you know, then your liver has to do a lot more to get rid of it. And, you know, toxins is another one, you know, we, live in a day and age. I don't think even if you go live in a jungle right now, that's going to be toxin free, right? And you have a great episode on this, you know, we are surrounded by toxins, but let's control what we can, our environment, our home, you know, the air, water, the personal care products you use, the cleaning supplies, so that you can just reduce the tox toxic burden on your on yourself. I think that's from a lifestyle perspective. And sweating is good, you know, movement is good, you know, exercise is good. And for if whatever reason, if you're unable to exercise, maybe you have an injury, maybe, you know, somebody's pregnant or, you know, going leveraging saunas is, is a great way to start sweating, you know, because sweating is one way we detoxify as well. Uh, you know, I really recommend my clients, you know, dry brushing is also a great way to stimulate your lymphatic system, which is a body's drainage system. These are some small tips that, you know, if people start to make changes to your diet, adding some supplements and some lifestyle can really be very supportive for their liver and gallbladder and ultimately their thyroid health. Absolutely. I think those are great practical tips. And I think that's what I want to do uh, like with people is that just having some tips like practically they can use in their life because that is much more easier to implement and they can kind of take help from it. I think that's mm -hmm. where, you know, I like your free gift that you're offering to people about the pantry swap. So tell more people about it. What is that gift they can avail from you? No, absolutely. You know, where, you know, making healthy meals starts with having a healthy pantry. So many times I work with clients and we start changing their diet, you know, provide some recipes and menu. But soon I realize if you're if the pantry is not set up right, if they're not using, if they're using the spices, the ingredients which are loaded with toxin, they're not going to have a healthy meal, even though the intention was right. So that's what inspired me to make this resource for my clients and for any audience to a healthy pantry swap guide. So if you go, if they go to my website, divyagupta.net, you can enter your email and it'll be sent to your email. An easy way to change your pantry, have healthy ingredients in there so you can whip up some healthy meals and knowing that, you know, they are, as clean as possible. So you're not loading up on more toxins. So I was very excited to create that and share that with all it, with the audience. Absolutely. And definitely we have, will have these links, you know, in the description. So please check out that healthy swap, especially as we are entering into the holiday season, you would like to know uh, what are your options in when, before you plan your holiday meals. So go check it out. Devya, thank you so much for coming over here. You know, like such an important topic about gallbladder and liver health. Uh, because as you mentioned earlier, nobody can think of them linked to thyroid disorder. So linking it and giving practical tips is so huge. So tell people like where they can find you and, you know, can they work with you and how they can do that? No, absolutely. And th thank you. Doc. I want to say first, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Anshul, for giving this opportunity. And really, you know, for what you're doing, you know, you have such great resources, conversations out there. And as I said, I wish I had that 15 years ago, you know, when I was, when I started dealing with this, it would have been a game changer and I didn't have to look, dig so deep to find it. But 
Uh, so yes, I, you know, in my practice, I work one-on-one -on -one and definitely autoimmune condition, thyroid, gallbladder, and liver issues are near and dear to me. And I personally know how I felt. And as we are getting into the holiday season, and it's a season of giving, I wanted to offer your audience, if they sign up to work with me one-on-one -on -one for any of my program, I wanted to offer a 10% discount. And they can reach me through my website, divyagupta.net, or through a Calendia link that will be also in the show notes where they can just book a discovery call with me as well. Um, you know, I don't wish what happened to me on anyone. And that's my mission in life to help reverse and, you know, get really people get to the root cause. So please, 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 if you think you have a gallbladder issue or you know, if any of the symptoms you resonated with it, get your thyroid checked. Absolutely. Divya, thank you so much. And thank you for being so generous of offering this discount. Please, guys, you know, this is your time to work with her and get your life back on track before the holidays hit. So again, all these links will be in the show notes. So please check it out. And uh, Divya, again, thank you so much for joining this conversation and uh, best of luck for the future. And any parting words you have for our people over here? Uh, no, no, thank you so, uh, so much. I, I think the parting words is, you know, act knowledge is only powerful if it's actually, you know, if you put into action. I think Jim Quick said that. So uh, I know we all listen to a lot of podcasts and great information. I think my one call to action for everyone is to apply. Just pick one or two things. You don't have to do everything together. Pick one or two things and apply it. And it takes, you know, and you'll see the change happen. So Absolutely. thank you. Again, thank you so much, Dr. Anshul, for what you're doing and for sharing your story and bringing all of us together on this topic. So I'm excited for 2024. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Devia. That's all, folks, we have for today for you. Hope you like it. We will